Hi, welcome to another video about uh, Office 365 and programming. And uh, this one's not so much based on my book, but I do have this new book, Creating Business Applications with Office 365 Techniques in SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI, and more. Um, and you can get that on Amazon or other booksellers. And you can click it here. It came out in November. And we'll see how it's doing today. Been doing pretty decently. Yeah, so number five in SharePoint guides today. So I uh, encourage you to get that. Uh, we do know the graphics didn't come out that great in it. So they're going to work on that in the future printing. But if you're watching this and, and you're going following along in the book, be sure to download, go to the source code and you can grab the source code and also grab all the original screen capture so you can zoom in really well and stuff. So in any event, one of the, the previous book to this, let's see if I click my book Thing. It didn't quite figure that one out, but let me see if I can find it. Programming for e-learning developers. So it's about 10 years ago almost. Let's see if we can find it there. Oh, I'm finding it that well. I'm put my name in there. There we go. Ah, there we go. So anyway, in this one, uh, I spent a lot of time in explaining how to uh, program in different languages and in today's video what I want to talk about is really power apps but I want to show you some different examples of programming because I like how they did it but it is a little bit of a different you know mechanism and just it's it's a little counterintuitive sometimes so I thought I'd just take some of my favorite programming environments and kind of just show a very simple example in each one and see it and then we'll go to power apps and do it and see if that is helpful at all so Let's start with uh, Windows. So uh, this is kind of the, the second big programming language I did. Actually, my book before that one was called vbtrain.net. And it was all talk about doing uh, training, which is from my background, uh, in visualbasic.net, which was brand new at the time, and uh, asp.net. So our first two examples, look at that. And then I'll do a quick one on Toolbook, which I used even before those. And then went in Power App. So very simple uh, in .NET or even the er earlier VB um, and C Sharp and that kind of thing. Um, it's a good way to just kind of see event-driven programming. So in any event, if you're not familiar with Visual Studio, I've got the toolbox over here, and you've got your properties over here. So if I just throw a button in here, you know, I can make it bigger. I can drag it, but also I can go over to the properties. And change it and it's kind of nice anything that's not the default in here is in bold so we can see it so I'll just change uh, I'm gonna call it change label and if I want to go in and change some of the colors and that kind of stuff I could do it here okay so I'm gonna grab a label as well put that on there Notice I can line them up and stuff but this is Label is going to be set on auto size, so and I'll just leave it as its text, and it's going to be named label one. So how do we write code? So breaking down a little bit, you know, programming is really all about three things: properties, methods, and events. So properties we've already seen. That's the text. That's the color. That's its position. Its size. Uh, events are things that happen to it. So when you have a button, you get the button click event. You've got the rollover event or the hover event, depends on the thing. You've got uh, the page load event. So those are things that occur and then you can do some changes, some programming in response to those events. So pretty much in our examples today, it's always the click event, what in Power Apps they call the select event. Uh, and then there's methods. What can it do? And that gets a little more complicated. So if you've got a video player, you can play, you can stop, you can fast forward, you can rewind. If you've got, uh, you know, uh, some other kind of object, it may be, you know, a, sub, uh, a submit. You can, you can move it, you know, make it submit the data. And we do a lot of that in Power Apps. So that's a method. And so if you're writing an object, if you're talking about object-oriented programming, you have those things. You, you can build properties, you can, ex you can have it do events, and then you can get exposed methods to make your object so that some outside object can tell your object what to do. So, all right, so let's get on it. So how do we 
do it in, in Visual Basic and in most of your traditional languages, you've got a separate file with your code. So notice if I double click here, oh, and I forgot to delete my code. I So let me do that again because I was doing an example of this first. So I've got my class, but now I've got my label and it builds this for me. Okay, so let me move it over a little bit so I can see the whole set of code. Actually, what I'll probably do is just get rid of my toolbox. So I've got a handler, and by default, it's calling the function or a, the subroutine in Visual Basic, which is basically a function without a return value. And it's got two parameters, sender and some object or some arguments, and then it handles the click link bit, and it puts that in there for us, but we could build it ourselves as well as we want. And then we start coding. So you probably saw a thing, but we can say label one dot, and then we get some IntelliSense. What can it do? Okay, and in this case, I'm gonna set its text equal, we'll just say, have a nice day. And then I can label one dot for color equals color dot, we'll say maroon here, one of the ones we can choose. Now we'll see again when we get to ASP.NET that this has to do with which namespace it in, but notice that it says system.drawing.color. So somewhere in my references, it's already inherited or imported that namespace, which is why I can just say color here. Okay, and then I can hit start and it will build me a form, but it'll put it on my other monitor here. Let me move it over and I've got the form. I can hit click change label and you see it made it maroon and it updated our, uh, you know, our, our uh, text there. Now, if I wanted, if I go back to the form again, it didn't save those changes. So it still goes back the same way that it was. So I could have changed properties of any of these objects. I've got the form, the the label and, uh, or the button and the label. So, so that's event driven programming in uh, a Windows Forms application. So we've got another one set up. So I've set up an ASP.NET. You see, I've got a web form. So that's basically a server side form. And then I've got an HTML page. So let's do the same thing in a server side form. So I'm just going to drag in a button and I'm going to drag in a label. So to make it very much like the other, like the Windows environment, we kind of even have the same names and so forth. But I'm going to go in. Now we can see I've got an HTML view as well, and it already put some breaks in there. I'll put one more, give us a little bit of spacing. But I can do it in the same way. It puts it in a code behind file, but I can, I've got my properties over here and I'll call it change label and double click it and notice it already put up load event in there so I could have done some stuff but it does it very much the same it's one reason people like ASP.NET web forms quite well even though it's not as popular now as MVC and some of the other things but it's kind of nice in the sense that it's very similar to the Windows programming so I can say label one dot text, very much the same, have a nice day. And I can say label one dot for color equals. And notice if I do color though, I don't get anything there. So we remember that it was in the system dot drawing namespace. So now I get color and I can do maroon again like that. So I can kind of throw you for a loop a little bit if you didn't have. Now the other thing you could do, in case you're into that kind of stuff, I could say imports system.drawing. And then if I did that, let's just do it again. I could now say color dot maroon like that. So that's what I was talking about earlier that it's not wasn't in the page, but it was in the references for the uh, the Windows Forms application already imported that namespace for us. All right, so we can go back over here. Now notice when we 
run a web plane, it sets up our own little web server. So it's going to put it in Chrome by default here. There we go. Oh, I, yeah, I changed the startup form when I was playing with it. So that was my HTML page. It hasn't been built yet. So let's go back to this and I can right click and say set as start page. So let's go do that again. There we go. Change the label and said have a nice day. Turned it maroon. So if you look closely, notice it it posts back. So it basically goes back up to the web server and re-renders it the new way. So if I if I send it that way, now I, I think it actually remembers the reason that it as it did it. But if um, well, let me just close it so you can see it again. Probably quickest but watch the whole thing kind of reloads and you'll see it come along and so it does that and it kind of flashed and the whole thing reloaded itself so uh, that's called a post back when we do html it won't reload the page it'll just change it right there on the fly all right so let's go back while i'm thinking of it we'll change the start page to our html now it also gets a, a toolbox if we wanted but i Typically on HTML, I won't do it that way. I'll just work right in the HTML itself. So we'll just call it a button, and we can do it as an input control too. They're basically the same. So we'll say ID equals button one, and we'll say on click. So notice that little symbol, and I noticed those before. That's our events. If we say on, you'll see we got all these events that we can do on blur, on abort, on drag, on key up, you know, on mouse over. So there's a ton of events that we could write, but I'm going to say on click equals, and then I'm going to name the thing. So I'm just going to say update label, and I'll normally do it like that, even though it works without it. And then I'll say change label like that. And if I go back, um, well, we'll see it when we do it. So we've, we've got that, but now we need to put our script in. And we can put a separate JavaScript file, a JS file in there. But here I'll just build it right in. So I put our script. So I'll say function update label. Oops. And now we're our brackets to do it. Now what you have to do, and this is why so many people use jQuery, and I've got a lot of different videos on jQuery. If I was doing our jQuery here, I could say something like var label ID equals dollar pound. Um, oh, and I didn't put the label in it, but it's going to be named label one like that. And that would make it a jQuery object. And the pound means I'm going to use the ID. So let me put the ID in there. That'll make a little more sense. And that's the jQuery does a lot of cool stuff, but uh, that's the its biggest thing is that we can use its selectors so that we can find the object and turn it time the name of the object and turn it into an object reference. So we can set its properties and call its methods, handle its events. But since we're not using jQuery here, I haven't added that to the thing. We can do the old school. So we get documents, say get element by ID, and put the name the ID of it. So it's not that bad. It's just there's some more complicated selectors that you can't always get it by delete by ID. You sometimes need to get it by what class it has or what text it has, and then jQuery becomes a lot more uh, uh, flexible. All right, so we're going to say now that we have an object, we're going to say label ID dot enter text. We could do enter HTML or enter text equals have a nice day again, semicolon at the end of the line. And then this syntax a little bit different, label ID dot style dot color equals... Uh, I forget what I actually put here, but I think I just said red. We'll 
try it out and see. All right, now we run it. Let's see if it works. It said it didn't shut down for whatever reason. I say change label. There we go. Have a nice day. And it's red. And notice I didn't put any initial text in there, which is why you couldn't even see it until it was done. So we set it that way and it's there. So that's a JavaScript way to do it. But again, object dot and then property or you can call methods and stuff that way as well. And then that's the event. All right, before I go to Power Apps, I know it's been a minute. One of my original programs I used to use, I used to wrote, wrote a program called Learning and Mastering Toolbook and a bunch of add-ons. So it's actually my company there is a has a, its own menu in the Toolbook environment. And Toolbook was by a company originally called Asymmetrics of Paul Allen of Microsoft fame. But in any event, that was the first one I really did other than like Fortran and some of that in college did a lot of programming in. So I just thought I'd show you the same kind of thing. So it's got a button and it's got what we call a field, but that's kind of a label. And then on the button, it's got its own property editor. So I'm just gonna call it change label and then it's got a script so it's not necessarily all in the same window it just kind of stores it with the object but just kind of show you how you do it here so instead of saying function it says or sub it says to handle and then the name of the event and now it's a uh, uh, text and so instead of dot it uses of so we'd say text of field label one equals have a nice day and then instead of four color it uses stroke color of field label one and it uses a hls so i can i forget exactly but we'll set it to some color 30 50 something like that and then when say in button click and so we hit control S to save. I need to click on this. And let's make sure this is called label one. All right, and we can save that. We hit F3 in that environment to go to reader. There we go. So I did kind of a brown color, but uh, you can see. So that's another one again, event driven. It's got handling the event. We write some code. All right, long last, let's go over to Power Apps. So I already did a one from Canvas and I have a, a blank screen in Power Apps. So let's try that same thing. On the insert menu, I can put a label in. You see, I already tried this. So it's now label two instead of label one, but I'll just rename it to label one just so that it matches up. And I'm gonna do a button. Again, same kind of thing, so I'll rename it to button one. And what's interesting about Power Apps is it doesn't have that code behind file. So it can be really nice because you can do it all in the browser, but it's uh, also, you just, it's kind of a mix. So that property browser also is your code. And so if you look, when we clicked on it, it actually, you can see the event. Instead of calling it on click, they call it on select. But you've got a mix of events and properties. So if I want to save it, go to the text, then I'll say change label. And I can also set them over here, the properties, and some of the advanced and so forth. But I can do it you know, in either place. Now, one thing, I think eventually they'll do a little better on the bolding of it because some of them bolded, some aren't. But I kind of expect this text here to be bolded since I've changed it from its default, but it doesn't yet. But you see the width and the X and Y change. And then, so let's try it how I would expect it to work. This actually doesn't work, but, um, oh, notice it's bold now, so it takes a minute too. So let's go back to the on select. What I expected to have happen would be kind of like we did before. So we could say label one dot text equals have a nice day. So do lowercase. 
then I'll put a semicolon for doing two things on there and I would say label one dot color. Notice it's got a color and then border color so we know that's the right one equals color dot maroon. So it doesn't give me a syntax error there. Looks like it's going to work, but let's go ahead and play it. And you'll see it doesn't actually work. So it's a let's say okay. So what we need to do instead is work with variables. So let's go back in here and we could do a context variable or a global variable. In this case, we're just staying on the screen, which is the, the scope of a context variable. So in general, you want to keep with the the most limited scope you can. So I'll do a context variable. So if I say update context, then the syntax is a squiggly bracket, the name of it. So we'll just call it label text, and then a colon, and then the value, and then close squiggly bracket, close parentheses. So that does the first one. And then the second one will do the same way. So we'll say update context label color color dot maroon. Oops. Here we go. And then going back here instead of just text, then I have to put the name of that value. Now if I wanted a default value that I have to on the screen visible or whatever event I could go ahead and actually we'll do that in a minute. So we'll try that. And so uh, then we go to the color instead of that we'll call it label color. And then we'll do on the screen. Now we've said on the screen so we've got some variables, but we've got an on hidden on visible. So that's a good event that we can do it. We can update context again. Oops. So this will be like its default value. Notice that it found that already. Label color. Whoops, actually I'll do the text first. So it's the same order. Um, I'm going to say an initial value like that. Label color, I'll say color dot black. All right, so let's try it. Oh, we have to do, let's see. Let's try it going back here. Yes, we didn't actually get it visible yet. So that's, that's actually an interesting thing. So I haven't actually saved it yet. So let's let's check the other part and see if it works and then we'll then I'll actually save it. See. So the yeah, so the change label did. We got the have a nice day. We didn't get our default one to do. So let's try that. Let's save it. And yeah, and I'll just say programming one. Power Apps. And let's go back here. See if I can refresh, reload this. There we go. Let's try running it here. Wants me to authenticate. Okay. Oh, I'm on the wrong. I got the wrong count here. There we go. That was interesting. Ah, uh, yeah. So now notice it has its initial value because when I was just running it on the form, it didn't run through that on visible event yet and then I change it and we get the different color and have a nice day. So again still uh, methods, events, 
properties, but slightly different where you have to set those variables and you can just not directly run that. And I cover that in the book. So we, you can't directly set the text of one object from a, another one. And many of the objects have a default property. So you have to set the default to a variable, update the variable, or set the text to a variable or the color to a variable and do it. So hopefully I think I've been going long enough, but hopefully that gives you an idea of some programming basics and how they differ a little bit in each environment. So have a good one. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check out the book if you haven't yet.